In today's video, well, this isn't really today's video because I actually recorded this whole video. It got deleted off my hard drive accidentally, and now I'm actually in huge pain because I have to reteach this. But we're going to do the total unique ways to make change problem. So what is this question asking us? It is asking us, given an amount and a certain amount of coins, one, two, and five coins, or we could just get a two coin, given an amount, we need to say how many unique ways are there to make change for this amount. So for the amount five, if you give me a one, two, and a five coin, there are going to be four unique ways. I can just use the five. I can use a two, two, and a one. I can use a two and three ones, and I can use five ones. If I have an amount three, and I just have the two coin, Am I going to be able to make change? No, there will be zero unique ways to make change. So how are we going to do this problem? Yes, we will use dynamic programming to solve this question. What we're going to have to do is, we are going to, at each stage, we are going to consider a certain coin and see how it changes the total amount of ways that we can make change. This is very similar to the zero one knapsack problem and you will see what I mean when we go through this dynamic programming table. And I will show you the sub problems and I want you to know the sub problems and not memorize the patterns of how we fill the table out. So let's look at that right now. Every single dynamic programming video should start out with the explanation of the sub problems. It's not about the table behind me, it is about the sub problems and how they relate to each other. So, what does this mean? What does that cell mean? That cell is the sub problem. If I need to make change for one, and I only have the coin one, how many total ways are there to make change? This cell means I need to make change for the amount three, and I only have the coins one and two. And notice, every row represents the addition of another coin. This row represents adding the one coin. This row represents adding the two coin. This row represents adding the five coin. If I put a dot right there, if I have the amount one, and I have the one, two, and five coin, how many total ways are there to make change? And then finally, the original question that we asked. If I have an amount of five I need to make change for, and I have the one, two, and five coin, how many total ways are there to make change? We are going to be answering six times four. We are going to be asking 24 questions, 24 questions to answer just one question, which is our ultimate goal, which is the goal at the end of the table. Here is how we start our table. If I have a zero, no matter what coins you give me, I am going to be able to make change one way, which is to do nothing. And again, I have zero. It does not matter what coins you give me. You could just have the one. You could have the one and the two. You could have the one, two, and the five. And it does not matter, there will be one way to make change using no coins. Okay, so that makes sense. So what if I have no coins at all and I need to make change for one? Then I will have zero ways to make change. If I need to make change for the amount two and I have no coins, how many ways can I make change? Zero ways. And then it's the same thing. Any amount you give me, if I have no coins, there's no ways I can make change. So now, the answer to this cell is we're adding the one coin. So we have two choices. Use the one coin or do not use the one coin. So here is how the relationship forms. The relationship is if I do not choose the one coin, our sub problem is make change for the amount of one and we only have the one coin. If I do not use the one, my amount stays the same, but my sub problem drops through and I have no coins. So if I don't use the one coin, I drop down a row and I have no coins, but I'm still solving for the amount one. If I do use the one, it changes my amount, but I stay in the row where I can use the one coin. So I subtract one from one, which is zero, but I stay in this row. So not using the one coin, using the one coin. When I add those two possibilities, I get where I'm sitting at. So this cell is one plus zero. If I do use the one coin, then there is one way I can make change. If I do not use the one coin, then there are zero ways I can make change. So when I'm at this position, I have those two choices, and the addition of those two choices gives me the total ways when I need to make change at this cell. Let's ask ourselves, if I only have the one coin and I need to make change for two, then I subtract one from here 
and then I go here in the same row. If this is if I do choose the one coin, so I did choose the one coin. So there's one unique way to make change if I do choose the one coin. If I don't choose the one coin, then there are zero unique ways to make change because I just can't make change if I have no coins. So one plus zero is one. And again, three minus one, I do choose it. I don't choose it, I do choose it. I don't choose it, I just go up a row because I'm not considering it. Every row we consider the, an additional coin. I'm not considering one, so I jump up to the zero. And if I do consider, I do my amount minus the coin amount, three minus one, lands me at two, I use the coin. So I subtract by its amount, but I still am in the row where that coin is considered because I just used it. So one plus zero, one. So now again, don't use the coin, zero. Do use the coin. Four minus one is three. Three, the answer is one at that subproblem. So one plus zero is one. And now, if we don't use the coin, it's zero. If we do use the coin, it is five minus one is four. And then we stay in the same row, so it becomes one plus zero, which is one. So think about this. If we just have the one coin, how do I make change for five? I do five one coins. If I just have the one coin and I make change for two, that is two one coins. Each of these are one unique path. So do you see how this kind of intuitively makes sense? And when we build these subproblem answers, we're going to have a correct answer down here. So now I'm considering the two coin. This is a big jump. This is why this problem is very similar to the zero one knapsack problem. We're now considering the two coin. We already considered the one coin. We're considering the two coin now. What I do is, can I even use the two coin when I have an amount one? I can't even use the two coin. So I can't go one minus two. I'm going to go negative. So here, all I can do is not use the two coin. So I just don't use it. So it becomes one plus zero because we just call it zero. So it becomes one and that becomes our answer. So now when we're at two, we can use the two coin. So if we don't use the two coin, we get a total unique ways of one. If we do use the two coin, it becomes two minus two, which is zero. And we stay in the row because the two coin is still considered, but it's subtracted from our amount because we used it. So we did two minus two brought us to zero in the same row. And now we have one. One plus one is two. If I have a one and a two coin, there are two unique ways to make change for it. A one and a one and just the two coin. That answer makes sense. So now, if we're at three, don't use the two coin, we get one. If we do use the two coin, three minus two is one. And now we stay in the same row. One plus one is two. And now here, don't use the two coin, we get one. Do use the two coin, four minus two is two, stay in the same row, we get two. So now two plus one is three. If we need to make change for the amount four, and I have a one and a two coin, there are three ways to do that. I use two two coins. I use two and then two one coins, or I just use four one coins. Three unique ways. It's making sense so far. So now, don't use the two coin. I have one unique way. If I do use the two coin, five minus two is three. We have two unique ways, and then now two plus one is three. And now we are at our final row. We are approaching our final subproblem. If we're at one, and we're considering the five coin. The five coin has jumped into the picture now. So now we're considering the five coin. Can I even use the five coin when I'm making change for one? Can I even use it when I'm making change for two? Can I even use it when I'm making change for three? I can't even consider the five coin. So what happens? I can't consider the choice of using it. I can't go one minus five, that's negative. So I consider only the choice of not using it. So this becomes one, this becomes two, this becomes two, this becomes three. Why? Because up to four, we still can't use the five coin. But what happens at five? We have our choice opened up to us to use the five coin. If I do not use the five coin, there are three unique ways. If I do use the five coin, five minus five is zero. Stay in the same row because five is considered in this row. So we have one unique way. If we do use the five, we have three unique ways. If we don't use the five, the addition of those is the unique ways if we have one, two, and five for the amount five. So three plus one is four. And that is our answer. 
There are four unique ways to make change for five, given the coins one, two, and five. At each iterative step, every row, we considered another coin, we considered another coin, we considered another coin, and at the end, we knew what the total unique ways are when we consider all of the coins. And that is what dynamic programming is about. We built our answers up through the relationships between the subproblems. We saw how they related, and we built up to our global answer here, which is four. So that that is how this problem works. So a lot ask about the intuition behind this. So a lot of these problems, intuition can drive the way you solve them, but sometimes it's just remembering these patterns, remembering the zero one knapsack type problems. That is the key to this problem. So let's look at time and space complexity. And so now the time and space complexities for this problem, we are going to be computing the answer to A times C subproblems. So that is the time we are going to spend solving subproblems. As for our space, we will be storing a plus one times C plus one subproblems. So our space complexity is just A times C. And remember, A is the amount and C is the number of coins that we are given. We also can do this in O of A space, but I wanted to keep it this space complexity for this walkthrough so that we could see how we change the coin we consider in each step. And this is very similar to the zero one knapsack problem, which I highly encourage you to watch. That was this question. If you like this video, if this was a clear explanation, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I hope to do videos like this every day to help others in the software engineering interview. So this...